Hi guys, I am Katie Lee and you are watching Completely Damaged. Completely Damaged! Completely Damaged! Welcome back to Completely Damaged, ladies and gentlemen. I am with Axel Ryan. Axel, thank you for your time. My pleasure, man. I'll tell you one thing. If there was ever a show that's more adaptly titled to have me on it, it's completely damaged. Because if you look at me, physically I'm completely damaged, but that doesn't even begin to tell you how completely damaged I am up here. So if there was ever a show that Axel Rotten was custom made for, it's completely damaged. We won't touch on that today, but basically... You're not going to touch on nothing. You touch on something, I'm calling the police, you start touching on me. I heard about you with touching things. Oh, God. Oh, jeez. Um... Now, actually, how did you get started in professional wrestling? Well, I got started in wrestling like most guys got started in the business. You know, I was a rat and I slept with one of the boys. Um, oh, no, no. How did I get in the bit? Oh, um, you're talking about me. But, uh, I mean, that's what I heard. Basically, what I did, you know, just, you know, I, I went to a wrestling school and I showed up there and just started, uh, you know, showing up every day. And they, they wouldn't talk to me because I was young. I was only like 16 years old. After about two weeks of hanging out and doing nothing, they said, all right, kid, get in the ring. So for like the next month, they proceeded to kick my ass to see if I was going to come back. So every day I came back, and then about like a month and a half into it, the guy's like, all right, Ac or Brian at the time, I wasn't actually, Ac Brian, get in the ring. I was like, oh, no, here we go, another ass kicking. Then the next thing you know, they started teaching me, you know, and, and you know, I went every day. I mean, I started, I had my first match when I was 17 years old. So, you know, unfortunately nowadays these guys aren't trained the right way with this whole, you know, the, the way their guys are brought in. They're basically models who look, you know, become wrestlers. I was brought in the way old school. You know, brought up through the ranks, you know, trained to the school, went to the territories and wrestled. But it's not like that anymore. But that's how I broke in, and I, and I would never change that for anything. I love this business, and I love the way I got brought into it. You know, the hard way, working in Memphis for 40, 50 bucks a night. But I got to wrestle guys like Jerry Lawler, Bill Dundee, Hot Stuff Eddie Gilbert. You know, I'm talking about guys that could teach me how to wrestle. These young kids today, you guys out there call yourselves wrestlers. You guys don't know how to work because you're not going to get the opportunity to go to those territories, wrestle those guys, and learn how to be a professional wrestler. The business has changed a lot since I broke in. Now you talked about people teaching you how to wrestle, like, like Jerry Lawler. What's the one veteran that taught you the best? Well, you know, I'll tell you, uh, I was I was lucky to have, have been able to, to wrestle a lot of guys that um, are very talented. Like I said, um, I, I, uh, people nowadays, if, if you, I'm kayfabe a little bit, if you can't talk over your match, these guys get so nervous. Well, back in my early days, when I first started off, you know, we were in completely different locker rooms. You know, I would be at one end of the building, you know, the baby faces on one side, heels on the other side. You didn't even talk to the guy till you got in the ring. I remember the first time I met Eddie Gilbert was in the ring we locked up together he goes how you doing Eddie Gilbert pushed me off so boom that's how we met each other um, I'll say the, the the way I learned the most was just through continuing to do it I mean the, the, the people say how long you been in the wrestling business I hear guys say I've been wrestling 10 years I'm like well how long how many matches you had well I wrestled maybe once every other month that's not doing it I mean I've when I was in Memphis down south I wrestled sometimes 30 40 times a month you know twice on Saturday every night of the week so, I mean, I don't think there's any one person that really was something that taught me a lot. It was it's just the culmination of being able to work with guys that were super talented, and I just absorbed everything I could throughout those years. Uh, what are your thoughts on wrestling in Philly, especially at the ECW arena? Well, you know, um, near and dear to my heart, Philadelphia has always been. Um, it, it, it's the place where I can unequivocally say that's where I made my reputation that's where I made my name that's where Axel Rotten became you know a, a hardcore piece of history because of the things that I did you know and and I have nothing but respect and admiration for all my fans anyone that, that to this day it's 2010 people will come up to me and talk about matches that took place in 1995 they talk about the Taipei death match the barbed wire bat match that's making a little piece of history. When someone's talking about a match that happened 15 years ago, and that's the admiration that they have for me, and I'll tell everyone watching this right now here on Completely Damaged, if you're watching this on some other website, but you shouldn't be. You should be watching it on Completely Damaged. If you're pirating this on YouTube, shame on you. Um, but uh, I thank all those fans out there because it means a lot to me that you still come up and ask me and want my autograph. Just like today at this autograph show, it humbles me to no end that people will still come up and will answer or ask questions about matches I've had and still want my autograph. So uh, I have such admiration for the fans of me and, and the fans of Philadelphia, uh, not just Philly, but especially that area because they really made me, you know, 
what I am today as far as uh, a, a person in wrestling that people still want to come see. Now you said death match. Personally, I don't know how I would prepare for a death match. How did you prepare for all these matches that you had in ECW? Well, you know, uh, someone like yourself wouldn't even last. Uh, let, let, let's be Not honest. Not even a minute? Nah, Come on. You, 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 uh, you would last in a death match about as long as you last in bed with a woman, which is, well, wait a minute, you've never been to bed with a woman, so let's not go into that. Um, the, just, Burn, man. Man, man, just play. Now, let's get serious. Damn it. Let's get se completely damaged. Let's get serious for a second. You know, the thing is about the, the death matches, you can't really prepare, man. You can't psych yourself out because if you sit there and you think about, wait a minute, 10 minutes from now, I'm going to be rolling around in broken glass, thumbtacks, barbed wire, um, you know, baseball bats. and You can't do that. What you have to do is remove yourself mentally from that area and say, you know what, I can't psych myself out. I got to go out there and just do the best performance I can. You have to block out that pain because let's face it, if you know that you're going to get hit in the head with a baseball bat, you're going to run the other way. If you know someone's going to grind broken glass into your forehead, you're going to move. So you don't think about that stuff, man. You can't out, out psych yourself when it comes to death matches. You just got to go out there and do it. Now, what are some of your favorite matches of your career? Well, you know, again, I uh, briefly touched on it. The fans, of, uh, the fans have spoken. The fans out there know that, you know, to this day, they'll come and talk to me about Axel versus Ian Rotten in the Taipei death match from the ECW arena from 1995, which is world famous. Uh, you have the, you know, I was the first ever barbed wire baseball bat match people still talk about. But there's other matches that I really enjoyed that people may not be aware of. Like, there was a match in the ECW arena. We did a um, three-way tag match. It was myself and Balls Mahoney versus Lance Storm and Chris Candido and Doug Furness and Phil LaFon in a three-way dance, which was an incredible match. One of the best, actually, wrestling matches that we've had up to that point in ECW. And there was a match that I did, I think it was leading up to Wrestlepalooza 98. It was myself versus Candido in a singles match at the ECW Arena. It was another phenomenal match. Uh, you know, I've been pigeonholed as this barbed wire, blood and guts guy, but if you go back and watch some of my matches, you know, and those that know, like guys like Terry Funk and Sabu, Raven, they'll all tell you, Axel Rodden's a hell of a wrestler. Axel Rodden's a hell of a talker. But I got pigeonholed into doing that blood and guts stuff. Go back and watch a match that's get tons of hits on the internet now still is Rob Van Dam's debut in ECW, Axel Rotten versus Rob Van Dam. Great wrestling match, had nothing to do with tables, chairs, or blood. So, you know, I want people to know that, you know, Axel Rotten didn't get into this business to become some barbaric barbed wire wrestler. It's just that I wasn't afraid to do it. You know, I got into this business just like all the rest of the guys that wanted to be a wrestler because I loved wrestling. I was just wasn't afraid to go out there and do that extra thing for the fans. You know what I mean? So the, the death matches were something that, you know, I, I did because I wasn't afraid to do it. But, you know, I, I just like wrestling. You know, without a doubt, in the ring, as long as I'm entertaining the people, I'm having a great time. Now, people try to bring ECW back as best as they can, which they can't. Um, we saw ECW One Night Stand, the WWE version. Right. Now we're seeing the TNA version. Um, you were part of both of those, correct? Yeah, you know, here's the thing. The, the original ECW was so great because it was raw. It was, it was really a gang of guys in this locker room fighting against an entire industry. I mean, what you saw out there on camera was blood, guts, and violence, and hard work because we all believed in a common goal. There was a group of thugs. We were just this group of, of outlaws, you know, traveling the country, preaching like almost trying to convert a cult-like following to say, follow this. You know, we, we were like the David Koresh of wrestling. We would, we would go out there and say, once you get a taste of this, you're not going to want anything else. You know, we were like the biggest, you know, we were, if, if, if ECW was a drug, we were the dealers because we were pushing it on everybody. And once you got it, you, you couldn't take the rest. You wanted the best you could get, and that was ECW. Um, and and the, the WWE one-night stand, lackluster you know it was it was so so and the second one was absolutely horrible um the tna hardcore justice was a lot of fun uh, i think the fans that lair live at, in orlando had a great time um i don't know if ecw could survive again with with the guys that we had because a lot of them are beat to death you know i mean uh, a lot of people fail to realize you know I, i've been wrestling 20 some years but i'm not even 40 years old yet i started when i was really young but a lot of those guys are close to 50 or over they probably couldn't do it but is there, is there a spot out there for that type of company? Yeah. But I think it would have to be us along with some newer guys doing it. You know what I mean? The TNA version of Hardcore Justice was fun. I had a great time. I don't know if I'm particularly on board for the angle that's going on now with the EV2 versus Million Fortune, whatever they're called. But, hey, whatever gets the guys work, I'm, I'm all for it, you know. Now, let's flip it up a little bit. Okay, um, Mr. McMahon asked you to come in saying you're a promoter for one night for ECW, bring back all the guys. What's your lineup? 
Uh, you know, I don't, I don't know. That's too much on the spot. But I'll tell you what, I would definitely have pretty much the crew that was at Hardcore Justice. Uh, it was great to see New Jack and Mustafa together. Yeah. You know, I've, you know, you know, you've seen me wrestle with New Jack a million times, and I'm hollering big props to New Jack. Is my boy, love him to death. Um, people say what they will about New Jack, but I'll tell you this: that's one guy that, as far as I'm concerned, he's always had my back. I've always had his. I consider him a friend. And uh, to see him and Mustafa together again was awesome. I mean, to be a part of that, first of all. Standing in the ring as a fan to sit back and watch that visual of seeing Balls Mahoney, Axel Rotten, the Dudleys, and the Gangsters in the ring all at one time with our hands raised. I mean, that had to be a great feeling. Yeah, I mean, that was incredible. So I, I, I think that that lineup that at the pay per view was great. I would add a few other twists and turns to it, maybe. It would be awesome, of course, to have Paul Heyman involved. But, you know, it, was, it didn't happen. But I think that uh, the fans still want to see that type of stuff. And as long as you guys, the fans out there, want it, you know, I'll still show up. You know, I mean, I love the fans and I love doing what I'm doing. So, you know, as, as long as the fans want to see it, I'll be there. Well, Axel, first off, thank you very much for your time. And um, any last words? No, my pleasure. All I got to say is remember this. You want the best in wrestling and the hottest news on the Internet. You know what it is. It's completely damaged. Don't keep it nice and neat. Keep it completely <laughs> damaged. Completely damaged. Completely damaged. Completely damaged. Don't keep it nice and neat. Keep it completely <laughs> damaged.